Well, hello everybody. I'm Masha Efrosinina. I am from Ukraine, but now I am in Munich uh, in the YouTube studio of Munich Security Conference, and I'm very honored to welcome here the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iceland, Ms. Tordis Kalbrun. Hi, hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, very nice to meet you here. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You just come back from Brussels. You're here in the Security Conference. Can you feel that this this like friendship of with other countries and this huge support, uh, including Iceland's support to Ukraine, it increases or it's like in uh, um, not a systematical but very um, not very frequent uh, um, process? What do you feel about uh, how are we coming into this year of war? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, the, the unity is still there uh, and I believe it will be there, you know, in the months uh, to come because there is just simply no other choice. Uh, I think we have, you know, a task ahead of us, some of the, some of the leaders, uh, when it comes to their own people, to, to, you know, you have to invest in the support of your people so, so you have the agency yeah, to, to sure. support Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, so I think it is, I, I think it is, increasing because because the ukrainian people has has shown i mean they're not giving up so we're obviously not going to give up uh and we've said from the beginning and i know it's sometimes difficult to say you know their fight is our fight because you know they're literally fighting and we are not but still there is a lot of truth in it um so i say i would say that uh the support is increasing not mm -hmm. decreasing Mm -hmm. What exactly Iceland have has been done for for Ukraine to support Ukraine? So we have, uh, you know, humanitarian assistance uh, through UN agencies. We have welcomed people from Ukraine. We now have around probably a little less than three thousand Ukrainian people in Iceland, and we're only three hundred and seventy thousand. So. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in comparison, that's that's uh, quite uh, a number, and we try to welcome them as as uh, warmly and well as we can. Um, we have then also because we are a country without an army, so we don't have any weapons. That we have no weapons to send. Uh, but we have, you know, in the beginning, we assisted uh, our friends and allies who wanted to ship their weapons to Ukraine, but they couldn't. So we offered them our airplanes and paid for it and flight to their country mm -hmm. and the weapons were put in there and they were flown to Ukraine. We have also put uh, three million pounds, you know, in the uh, Ukrainian fund, which is led by the UK. We've put money in, in the uh, CAP funds within NATO. So we have used our money uh, in funds, which then can do the things that needs to be done. And what we have, we have knitted a lot of uh, Icelandic wool. We've sent nine tons of warm clothing, shoes and, and all kinds of equipment. And we heard from, you know, we had heard from NATO headquarters that, uh, you know, those shoes and those warm clothing were as, as important as, as the weapons because, you know, without them, you can't really uh, do the job. So we have tried to be creative we try to move fast because we're small which means that everyone is phone call away so we can sometimes yeah. move faster than the bigger countries that have more layers and more like uh, uh, bigger bureaucracy yeah more complicated bureau bureaucracy and we have uh tried to do our best by to to listen to the to the ukrainian government so when they say something is working better than others we follow that It's interesting you said that uh, you are the country without army. This terrible war in the 21st century, in the center of Europe, mm -hmm. maybe it became a reason for your country to think about your army. Army, or So we have, you know, we're a founding member of NATO. So we have been in, in NATO since it was founded, 1949. Yeah. Um, and we have a bilateral defense agreement with the United States since 1951, which was, you know, our access into NATO really. Mm -hmm. um, we're such a small country that our army would always be very tiny, but we totally depend on others' armies, which means that uh, even though, you know, we can be grateful that we don't have an army, we, we should definitely not brag about it because we know that we are defended by, by others. Um, and that is also why 
I feel that we have a big responsibility when it comes to fighting the values because the values are literally our defense. Like, and, and because we don't have an army, I, it, it's my opinion that we need to speak even louder uh, about these values. I mean, Iceland would not stand a chance in Putin's world. We would just not stand a chance. So we really, you know, uh, I would say that we understand and feel, even though the threat is further away from us, uh, that, you know, eventually it would it would come to us uh, as well. Maybe you know that I'm the UN ambassador in yes. Ukraine. I learned that UNFPA is one of the Isle of Iceland's prior to co cooperation yes. organizations. Why is UNFPA is so important? This cooperation is of particular importance to you. Well, our our priorities in foreign policy in general uh, is, you know, gender equality, uh, women empowerment, uh, opportunities for for girls and, and children, of course, uh, to be educated for. Uh, and it, it, it so it goes very it aligns with that. Um, and we have been uh, increasing the funding uh past couple of years and we are very we are very proud of uh, our strong cooperation because Iceland obviously I mean as a, as a little population um we have our limits but we we try to you know stand up and say what we mean and mean what we say and we have a very clear priority in certain fields and this is uh, one of them and uh, so we try to be you know punch above our weight sometimes um, and, you know, small countries can often do. Yeah. Um, uh, for final message, uh, I want you to send to Ukrainian women, because mm -hmm. uh, for now, Ukrainian women are standing um, themselves um, against war in, uh, I can say, not like safe zone, but not in the front uh, line, because all our men, are there in front line and we are we are we living just waiting for their calls every day yeah. from that place but now women of ukraine are not just mothers uh, or working working persons mm -hmm. they're doing everything for both maybe you can send some messages to our ukrainian women because having such a powerful woman here, ministers or making politics of global world, of their countries. This is very necessary for our mm. girls to have the support like yours. Well, thank you. I mean, of course, I can't really imagine um, their situation. You know, I come from a country with, you know, peace and yeah. equality and kindergartens for every child that lives in Iceland. That's why, you know, Icelandic women don't have to choose between... We had the same a year I ago. I know, exactly. <laughs> so we had the same, Ex absolutely. Exactly. So uh, I know that, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to say, you know, <laughs> be there, you know, be empowered, believe that this will at some point be over and, you know, the, the future is yours, the, you know, your country is yours and you have all the opportunities to 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 make of it and bring back what you know what what was there and then you have the opportunities to do better in the fields that you want to do better in and and the, you know ukraine really needs uh strong women strong girls f to to uh you know to to rebuild this amazing uh country with all of its opportunities with all of the innovation and all of the you know things that uh, you 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 were doing you know yeah. And that you will be doing, um, and you know. So I just have the general message that uh, you know women can do everything. Literally, that's you know. It's and you don't have to be. Um, you can be a normal person to do. You can be a usual normal person to do unusual things. Absolutely. That's what I have. And I we are fighting, learned. even not uh, I mean, handing our, uh, arms in our hands. We are fighting. We are standing. We are not victimizing ourselves. Exactly. We and that's, that's extremely empowering as yeah. well. I mean, I, you just, I mean, you, you literally amaze me every day. And, you know, I, I could not believe more in the future of Ukraine. And I know that women will be uh, a big part of that future. I and I know in, in with decision making with diverse group, 
you know, you will become even stronger. Yeah, I know. Thank you so much. Thank I have you. to let you go, yeah. but I don't want, of course. <laughs> Thank you so very much for coming and have a very effective process work here. Thank you. Thank you, very <laughs> Thank much. you so much. Likewise. See you later.